that's a very, very interesting theory. It's nothing but the theory of relativity. In addition, I have a very big surprise for all of you. So, let's start our discussion. Theory of relativity is one of the most interesting and stunning theory in the history of physics. This is the content that we'll discuss today. Albert Einstein, maybe the one of the best brain of all time, gave us this interesting theory. He published his theory of special relativity in 1905 in the physics journal Analander Physic. Later he developed his theory of general relativity between 1907 to 1915 and finally published that in 1916. Before going to the main theory let's discuss some basics. I think you all have the idea of classical relativity. I know you all are familiar with the example like walkway example, some examples in daily life like bus or car or train example. In simple words it gives us ideas away. For two people agree on what they see if one of the people is in motion. We know that in this universe, nothing is stationary, everything is moving, the entire solar system, the Milky Way. Everything is in motion. So, it's not enough to ask that how fast I am moving. We must ask how fast am I moving relative to some other object. Let's discuss about why this theory was developed. The man who made the first color photograph, James Clerk Maxwell, unified everything known about electricity and magnetism. According to Maxwell, light was an electromagnetic wave that moved through empty space with a speed of c, that is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. He told that of all the things in the universe it's only light, whose speed is constant relative to everything. But from the standpoint of classical relativity the question naturally arises of how could this be possible? Because speed of something is always relative. This was a dilemma facing a physicist at the turn of the 20th century. How could both be right? And the very foundation of physics was facing a crisis. In order to alleviate the crisis of physics, a 26 years old patent clerk came up with an unforgettable explanation. Yes. I'm talking about Albert Einstein, and the theory was the theory of relativity. What? How can it be possible? I do not understand anything. Well, it's a very complicated theory. I told that I have a surprise for all of you. Recently I found it a transversible wormhole. The surprise is now we will travel through the wormhole and we'll meet Albert Einstein and he'll explain you the theory. Really? How lucky we are. I accepted both of these seemingly contradictory notions, accepted the idea of relative motion, but I had restated it as follows. I postulated that all observers will measure the same speed of light, regardless of their speed of motion, but speed is just a measure of distance moved in a given time, and in order to agree with the speed of light, different observers might have to disagree about distance and time. And my theory of relativity explains this dilemma. Sir, can you please explain what is the main point of your theory? Well, can you do one thing? Now all of you come to my lab, I will briefly explain the whole thing to all of you. Basically, my theory of special relativity gives the concept of relativity of simultaneity, mass energy equivalence, time dilation, length contraction. It also tells that maximum speed is finite. That is no physical object, message, or field line can travel faster than the speed of light in a vacuum. The concept of time dilation and length contraction seems difficult to grasp. So, I'll explain these two theories. Here are two starships, one at rest and the other in motion. When the moving ship passes the stationary, each fires its lasers. According to my theory, speed of the light doesn't depend on the motion of the ship, so both the beam of light will travel side by side at same speed. But, we can see that the distance covered by the two beam of light is not identical. How can this be possible? As speed of light is constant, then both the light beam have to cover same distance in same interval. So, is the light is moving in half of C, in case of ship in motion? The answer is new. And that's time dilation. What happens inside the moving ship, in order to keep the light speed constant, the time dilated itself. Let's take two clock, 
which are made of two mirror and a beam of light, bounces between them. Let's say the distance between two mirrors is D and time needed to cover the distance is one second. Now you can see that the beam of light and stationary clock, it is traveling exactly the distance D. Watch carefully that the beam of light and moving clock is traveling more distance and it will show slower time as compared to stationary clock. So, what is one second for the stationary clock is not one second for the moving clock. And this is time dilation. So, the faster you will travel, slower the time will pass for you. Whatever, now we'll discuss about length contraction. The fact is, time doesn't actually dilate enough to keep the speed of light constant. Something else happens in its length contraction. So, it's not just time that's relative, it's length as well. New boy in the two clock. Now, what happens is, when it's moving in very high speed the object's length contracts. Here, in the case of clock in motion, the distance between two mirrors is smaller than we thought. So, the distance has to travel is actually smaller than we think. In conclusion, time dilation and length contraction work together to ensure the speed of light remains constant. In other hand, theory of general relativity gives us idea about gravitational time dilation, precession, light deflection, frame dragging, metric expansion of space. Basically, he explained gravity. This can be visualized as through an example of trampoline that because of the mass of the sun, a simple path is created, and all the planets follows the simplest path, like it happens in trampoline. But, think, that the trampoline analog you normally see on TV, is a 2D plane used for visualize this, but it's actually in 3D. It looks more like this graphic. To be much more accurate it's like this. Now, this is much more difficult, to visualize, or animate, and that's why popular TV shows, our explanation ignores this, but it's more accurate. There have been a lot of experiments, and in all experiments, Einstein's theory has repeatedly been proven absolutely right. One of the most famous experiment is Hafel-Keating experiment. The Hafel-Keating experiment was a test of, of the theory of relativity, to be fair. They were looking at both time dilation due to motion and gravitational time dilation. In October 1971, they took four Sasium atomic clocks that brought commercial airliners. They flew twice around the world, first eastward, then westward. Other clocks remained at U.S. Naval Observatory. When reunited, the three sets of clocks were found to disagree with one another, and their differences were consistent with the prediction of special and general relativity. There was in another famous experiment that was experimented after only four years of publication of general relativity. According to Einstein, light bent an effect of gravity. During a solar eclipse, a team led by English astronomer Arthur Eddington in 1919 photographed stars. If Einstein was right, then the position of the stars near the sun appear different than predicted location, based on where they should be seen at night. This would happen because, as light passed near the sun, it should be bent by curvature of space due to gravity, and that's exactly what they found. The experiment proved that Einstein was right. In modern life, we use GPS to get accurate location. But, do you know? In order to get the accurate location clocks of GPS satellites are synced with the clocks on Earth, otherwise your GPS app would give you inaccurate locations. I hope all of you have enjoyed the class very much. Whatever, the bell is ringing. Bye.